Okay, I've just unloaded this B31 engine out of the boot of my car. I've just been down to uh, a place called Bourne in Lincolnshire with a very nice guy called Max Waller who sold me this B31 engine. The history behind the engine was it was in a, a swinging arm frame that was a 1960 bike basically and Max wants to build a Rocket Gold Star lookalike so he wanted the frame and he wanted the running gear to use um, with an engine he already had so obviously that made this engine surplus um, it's stripped now Max said it was running when he got it and he decided to strip it and have a look at it and he thought the engine was so good um, that he would leave it altogether and sell it as a unit because he didn't have any use for it. Apparently all the, the crankcases, everything inside was in really nice condition. So it looks very much like it's been refurbished by somebody who knew what they were doing. It's been put together, but it hasn't been put together with gaskets so it can come together very easily. He's left it like that so a potential buyer like me could have um, seen it and it could be stripped. So here we have the, uh, the, the crankcases. Um, the bearings have all been tried and they've, they've found to be nice and firm without any play. Uh, push rod tube. The cylinder head. There we have the, um, the push rods. The valves which need re-grinding possibly few nuts and bolts, there's the oil pipe, uh, the carburetor and the cylinder barrel. Now he tells me the cylinder barrel looks perfect and he also tells me that the piston which is around here somewhere, there's the piston, um, looks to be a standard piston so it looks very much like the barrel has been resleeved to standard. The carburetor isn't a carburetor from a B31 because the inlet port, I'll come around the other side so you can see the inlet port on the cylinder head down there had been opened up to 1 and 3 sixteenths whereas the connection on the carburetor, I'll turn it over there the inlet hole on the carburetor is actually only 15 sixteenths. Apparently, the, it would appear the inlet port had been done because that's kind of the size of a gold star. Somebody's done it very professionally in the past, so I can either put a larger carburetor on, I can either get a sleeve made to fit in there that will fit onto this carburetor, or I could just put it together like that and apparently it'll still run like that. The carburetor, although it's not of the B31, according to Max, is, he has refurbished it, it's been rejetted, and everything's been set up for a B31. So it would appear that everything is, is there. He did say there were a couple of pieces missing. There's uh, a couple of rocker pieces missing, which I'm going to have to get. And probably the biggest thing is the oil pump. I need to source an oil pump from somewhere. If possible, if SRM do one, I'll get an SRM one, and I'll probably put that on my big B33 and, um, and put the B33 one on here. Uh, I wanted the engine to work on. I wanted a spare engine. And I wanted a project for the winter, and this is going to be the project. But it looks in excellent condition, and I really hope that it lives up um, to, its, to its promises. And that's all the information I have up to now. But if I start doing, or if and when I start doing any work, I'll document the work. I'm going to take the time and side off now. It's just taken me 20 minutes to find that. The Allen key that fits those Allen bolts in there. <clears throat> I'm going to take the time and side off. Um, 
because I've got some uh, cheese head screws actually that'll go in there they look a, look a bit more original um, I forgot to mention on the uh, a little bit earlier the, the piston I have cleaned the piston up a little bit and um, I've actually noticed it's a high compression piston I don't know if that's a standard piston I don't think so but it's definitely a high compression piston so anyway let's take this uh, timing side off and see what's in there We've taken the uh, timing cover off as you can see there the, there's, a, there's a section missing from the breather um, cover there which I'm going to have to source but when we have a look inside the timing gear it would appear that the large pinion timing wheel has been lightened because it's had all these holes drilled in it so for some reason it's been lightened now that come combined with a high compression piston suggests that somebody at one stage wanted a bit more performance out of this engine. The next instruction says remove the six bolts that secure the cam pinion steady plate and that's these bolts here. So I'll remove them now. There's the six bolts that have uh, been removed from the cam plate which is there exposing the timing gear and the camshaft gear so those are the next items that I need to remove I don't want to just pull them out straight away I need to have a look because there's marks on these timing pinions there's dashes and there's dots that line up with each other and I just want to make sure what I'm doing before I pull them apart. I've checked a little bit more on these pinions now and um, and I can go ahead and remove them. The Dynamo Drive idler pinion which is this large one here on this particular um, bike has been, has been drilled, it's been lightened for some reason. I've just marked a little red mark to make sure that it's it's lined up properly with the inlet camshaft pinion. Um, I don't think it matters that much because it's driving the dynamo but I've just done that anyway so you know that can just come off and there we go. We now have the inlet camshaft, that's the inlet camshaft pinion and that's the exhaust camshaft pinion. Now, each one is marked with a dot and a dash and they're interchangeable. But the inlet pinion, which is on this side, the dash must line up with the dash on the main shaft pinion. There's a little dash on the main shaft pinion and the exhaust uh, camshaft pinion must line up with a dot on the exhaust to the dot on the main shaft pinion and they just come out like that and on the rear of it you can see that this or that this is the actual cam, the actual inlet cam I don't know what type of inlet cam it is. It looks quite a high lift cam to me, but I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I'll have to have a look at that. So that's the inlet cam comes off, and then that is the exhaust cam, and that is off. And the next stage will be I'll probably have to get a puller to withdraw the main shaft pinion that is the next stage the next job is to uh, remove the main shaft pinion using this special BSA tool 613256 I was lucky enough to have one of these so I'll, um, I'll, I'll try and get it off now
and there we have it. <laughs> Took a little while getting it, getting it off, but uh, there we have it. That's the uh, the main shaft pinion. And we're now going to remove. You can just see here the very small woodruff key that fits into that slot there and that is the key and it fits in and it keeps the cog in place so we've taken that out and we'll store it in a safe place okay I've turned the engine upside down I'm going to take the the sump plate off I knew when I bought this engine that um, I didn't have an oil pump so I have to source an oil pump whether or not there's a um, the oil pump worm drive in here, I have no idea. There we go. No oil pump and no oil pump drive. But at least I know now. I think we'll just have a quick recap here. I bought this B31 engine from a, on the recommendation of a friend whose friend had it and I trust these guys a lot honest genuine people so I went quite a long way to get this engine um, and it really does appear to be a good engine as I said earlier on I've been taking things apart very slowly the reason I've been doing that is yes I've worked on A10s before but never on one of these and I, I, I kind of I'm just feeling my way so I'm now gonna try hopefully I'm at the position where I'm gonna split the crankcases the reason I'm doing that is because this was such a good engine supposedly the guy who was selling it had stripped it and instead of putting it back together at the cell he put it back together loosely and he didn't put gaskets on um, because he was he was um, prepared to strip the engine again for a buyer if they wanted to see it so that was why he left it like that and that's and that's the position position I've got it in so now it needs putting together properly which is um, which is what I'm going to do there's one or two bits and pieces I've got to pick up along the way and hopefully I'll be able to do that so you know, that is the position four bolts removed and that is the crankcase split absolutely everything looks really clean and in really good uh, in good order so that's the engine completely split now And I do have to say that it really does look superb. Not cheap, but well worth it. It's been either well looked after or it's been well, well rebuilt, this engine. Now we can put it back together. I'm going to uh, dismantle all the ancillary pieces and equipment from the cylinder head because uh, I'm going to send the, the cylinder head and the barrel away to get refinished so I'll make a start on that now well there we are just arrived this morning from Phil Pearson Engineering um, completely reconditioned oil pump for the B31 engine it's 65 pound which is very very reasonable considering that one there the body of that one I got from a supposedly classic bake shop in Newcastle upon Tyne and I paid about 
70 quid for that one and it was absolute rubbish but this one back from Phil Pearson is great so that'll be going on the B31 engine another little packet of goodies arrived this morning from uh, courtesy of Dragonfly uh, the straps for securing the mag dyno in place they have to go on before I put the crankcases together that's why I had to go and get some of these so that's a couple of more pieces all for the price of £42.97 that's the uh, Magdino holding straps in place there I've put the flywheel back into the timing side and as per the manual, I've had the um, the cylinder head and barrel retaining bolts out and put a little bit of gasket seal on them and put them back in. So that's where we're up to now. And then we'll carry on and hopefully join the crankcases together. Well, the crankcases have now been joined together and sealed, sealed up as you can see. Everything has gone together really well. So we're now going to get on and um, and insert the timing gear. I've inserted the woodruff key onto the main shaft and. Just put on the half time pinion which is uh, now engaged with the oil pump drive. So we'll get on and put the rest of the gearing together. Well that's the cams, the cam spindle plate, the idler pinion, all put back, all nicely oiled up, put back in position and we're getting along very nicely here. I'm waiting for the cylinder barrel and the cylinder head to come back because they are being um, powder coated and then we'll get on with a little bit more work when they come back. A couple more arrivals this morning courtesy of our wonderful Royal Mail um, who won't leave the parcels with a neighbour so I've got to drive four miles to pick them up. Uh, the first one is the little kit for valve grinding which I'm going to use to um, to seat the valves in then the second bit is um, guess what <laughs> it's an engine stand because the engine is uh, coming together quite well it's quite heavy now I don't want to run any risks of uh, damaging it or it falling over so I've invested the princely sum of £36 including postage to put the engine in the stand, hopefully that will make it safe and secure uh, while I'm working on it and for the foreseeable future. And there we have her, snug, safe and secure in her own little engine stand, ready to carry on. So let's get on with the, uh, with the next phase. And that's my barrel, the cylinder barrel that's just come back from powder coating. And over here, that's a cylinder head just been powder coated. My good friend John has just been having a, a go at resetting one of the valves. Oh, he's made a great job of that, I mean, for the paint and that, didn't he? Oh, they're the best one, honestly. So this is lapping the head in with the barrel mm -hmm. to make sure there's a perfect seal. That's coarse. Yeah. Coarse ground paste. Coarse ground paste, yeah, right. And we've put the head on it now. I 
Right, and I've got to hold it so that's it for now. So that come up good. Mm -hmm. So that's the barrel and the head. Okay. Lapping it again, that's come up really well. Well there we are, I've got the timing cover on now and she really is looking very very sweet. I've got the cylinder head and the barrel back from my very good friend uh, John who's had them powder coated and uh, as you saw in the previous clip he was uh, a great help tapping out all of the holes to make sure there was no, all of the threads to make sure there was no residue of powder coat inside them. Um, and just helping me with grinding the valves in and reseating the head. So a little bit of finishing off work to do to the surfaces, the, the gasket surfaces on the, the cylinder head, cleaning up and then um, hopefully I can, I can start the process of, of getting that together but she really is looking, uh, looking really nice at the minute. I've just finished grinding the uh, the valves in. They were in excellent condition, but as, as a precaution, I thought I'd just dress them up a little bit with a bit of fine grind, uh, grinding paste. And that's what I've done. Um, so we're all set now. I'm just awaiting a couple of parts. I'm awaiting some new collets, uh, some new circlips, because I don't really want to put the piston back in with the old sir clips, I don't think that's good practice. So, when those bits come, um, I can complete the cylinder head, put the cylinder head together. I've got a bit of work to do on the um, on the rocker boxes. I think I'll polish them up a bit. They're, they're, they need a little bit of polish, and hopefully we'll be almost ready to put the the, the rest of the engine together. Uh, the one thing that I'm missing, and hopefully I'm gonna uh, gonna get it for this engine, is um, I haven't got any of the exhaust lifter, the valve lifter uh, equipment that fits in the cylinder head. Unfortunately, the guy I bought the engine off wanted the valve lifter gear for one of his uh, projects, so I think he took it off before before he sold the engine to me. I knew that before I got it. Um, so it's just something I'll have to source. I'll source that um, to complete the cylinder head and then sometime in the future I would like to get a magneto and a dynamo to put in there. But I'm sure you all know a very expensive, everything to do with, with um, vintage motorcycles, um, no matter what age, seems to be very expensive these days. But we try our best, you know, to keep them on the road. That's what it's all about. So we'll carry on very shortly. Right, we're going to make a start putting the uh, the valve gear back in. I'll do a little bit of it. I kind of film it all because um, it takes me a little bit of time to do it. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to put the um, the, the the valve seats in. So I'll, I'll put it a, a nice. A liberal spread, spread of, uh, of fresh oil around this and hopefully that one, the exhaust one will just drop straight in, the, the inlet one sorry, and on this side we'll do exactly the same. Nice bit of Oh, you have to lubricate it and then stick that seat in. And that one just very gently might need a little tap with my trusty, in fact it's gone down there, it's, it's home. So I've got the two valve seats in. I'll um, 
I'll set the, uh, the equipment up now with the, the valve spring compressor to, uh, to put the collets in. Okay, I've got the, uh, the inlet valve in, as you can see there, with the, 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 the valve spring compressor connected to it. And you might just be able to see in there, that little gap in there is where, hopefully, in a few minutes' time, I'm going to put the, uh, the collets, and then I can release the pressure on the spring, and hopefully the valve will be in place. Well, after three or four attempts with my ham fisted fingers, I've eventually got the inlet valve and the collets in place. And there, so now let's carry on with the exhaust valve. And there we have it. The exhaust valve is now in place. So I've got both valves in place. I'm quite pleased with that because. Um, it's a long, long time since I did that, and it went, quite, went you know, reasonably well. There wasn't much uh, problem doing it. I'll just try and turn the cylinder head over here, and then you can, you can see there we are. Both valves in place, both looking really good, and um, we'll carry on with the next phase, which is probably going to be. Uh, I'll probably put the rock egg here in next. Well there we have it, I've um, managed to put both sets of, of rocker gear in there and I've stuck a plug in the hole just to protect the hole so we're doing, we're doing quite well there now I think I might have a look at, um, at maybe getting the piston in there I've warmed the piston up with a uh, with a hair dryer quite well actually, and um, I'm just gently locating the gudgeon pin. It's going in quite nicely. Lots of oil on it. for the sear clips and I think that should do it take the old um, good pin remover off and that's it I just need the sear clips in now I'm absolutely chuffed the bits because I've just put the cylinder barrel on which is a bit of a dicey operation just by yourself to make sure there's no damage to the rings or everything and I'm really really pleased um, because we're now making progress the next stage was locating the push rod tube in the cylinder head just very loosely before the cylinder head is fitted but unfortunately I've just realized that I haven't got a gasket for the bottom of the push rod tube so I'm gonna to have to get a gasket before I can carry on with the next stage so there we are the cylinder head is on it's uh, it's tightened down the push rods are located where the tappets are at the bottom and they're located into the rocker arms at the top and basically that's it I do need to source some valve lifter equipment or valve lifter gear that goes into the cylinder head I haven't got that um, but there's no hurry for that and eventually I want to get a mag dyno to put in where, where the loop is there and that'll finish it off and then that is me B31 1955 spare engine and it's a beauty okay that's the engine 
more or less finished the main part of the engine. I've put ancillary equipment on the rocker boxes, uh, the pipes, and I've stuck a carburetor on there at the minute. At some time in the future, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, maybe get a, a mag dyno and put that on and, and make it look great. I'd like to say a very, very big thank you to uh, John Moss Robinson. If you go on his website, just Beezer's website, it's a fantastic website. John is a good friend of mine and he's helped me enormously with actually helping me with work and advice. And I'd like to say a big thank you to John for helping me to get this engine in the condition it's in and in, in the position it's in now. Thank you very much. And that is essentially it. Thanks for watching.